Hey, Internet. It's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now, today's episode, we were talking about Hub Bank accounts. So I'll talk about what a Hub Bank account is, why you'd want one, what you should look for them in them, and, of course, the ones that I personally use. So of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. So, Hub Bank account, what is it? Well, you've probably heard me use the term before, and it goes counter to this channel because this channel is about opening and closing bank accounts. However, a hub account is an account that you leave open no matter what um, to keep, you know, basically a home base for your banking needs. That is a hub account uh, in the highest sense of the word. So, you know, yes, it go, you're, you're basically going to lose out on a bonus or two, right? I have two hub accounts, Chase and Ally, and we'll talk about how I landed on them. But, you know, it makes life easier to have two, two hub accounts, one or two at least. You can have as many as you want, technically. Um, but well, we're going to talk about why you'd want these and, of course, how you what you should look for in these accounts. So, yes, you're, again, you're giving up some money for bonuses. But, you know, when you play this game, you know, you still need a spot to do your regular day-to-day -day banking with. We move around a lot of different money. But, you know, one, one big thing here is like what I call like operating capital, money to keep the lights on. So if you have an account, you know you you know you're going to do a lot of bill pays, uh, mortgage, uh, car payments, utilities, things like that that you may want to avoid the processing fee so you don't use a credit card. You're going to have some place where your direct deposit goes when it's not going to another bank, which you know we try to have our direct deposit going everywhere all the time, but sometimes I just don't need to put all of my money out there from a direct deposit since I can split mine up. So if there's leftover, I don't have a bank account that week, send it to the hub account, right? it's simply easier to have one spot. If I close this account, my Chase account in this example, then I would have to set up bill pays every single time I moved, right? It's kind of annoying to set that up. Sometimes you have to verify by microtransactions, by played, and you know you can get pretty um, borderline in time there. Maybe you miss, miss the window to verify it and you're, you know, you're missing payments because of it. You know, it can have. It would probably happen over the course of a year somewhere. I'm sure of it. You know, in addition to that, again, it's just uh, it's easier to have that one spot where you can keep a few dollars. You know, almost look at it as like, well, I'm going to lend out as much of my money as I can to these banks, but I don't want to drop below two or three thousand dollars in this hub account because, again, that's where money you have access to money if something comes up for day to day expenses, things like that versus this money that's on deposit of these other banks is for bonuses you would hate to have to you know take money out there lower your bonus amount or blow it all together so again having the hub account with a little bit of balance that you know you don't really you, you use the money but you don't go below that because that's your operating money is a good thing there so the other real reason and it may or may not be a reason really just depends on how much you play this game is that as you play this game more you'll rack up you know a check score a check score is basically like your credit report for bank accounts so i'll link a full video down below for you but the gist of check score is that you know they look at how many accounts you've opened and closed do you have derogatory remarks things like that and so, you know, bigger banks pull checks. I, I think City does, but City doesn't really look for like how many accounts. They look for derogatory amounts. Did you bounce a check? Something like that. Smaller banks, mid-sized banks. Um, you know, if you were going to use your local bank, for example, for a hub account, you know, they they will get scared about how many accounts you've opened and closed, which you're going to do a lot if you you know follow this channel and play this game. So it could potentially be tougher to find a banking home later as, as you, the months go on that you play this game. Now, realistically, I, I've been able to get around checks by simply going in branch for bonuses. So it's not to say you're going to be locked out forever and not have a banking home, but it could potentially be harder. So again, those are, I think, the primary reasons, ease of use, operating funds, and then never being in need of a banking home. So the two accounts that I have are Ally and Chase. I have them both for different reasons. So my Chase checking account, still my college checking account, which I finished college in like 2014. They used to call me a lot and like, hey, do you want to upgrade? I was like, no, I don't. It's fee free. Like, I'm good. I don't want to upgrade it, right? So I have that one because, you know, I it's going to surprise people. But number one, I find it easier to have when needed a physical bank access even if it's just ATMs. Like I am a proponent, even though I have a credit card channel, that everyone should carry some some cash. Like it's just you should just should do it, right? Um, and it's a lot easier to be like, oh, that's a Chase ATM. Great. I don't have to worry about who's in network, who's out of network, is this ATM safe? That whole thing. Just find the blue logo, the house of diamond, go get my cash. On occasion, you need checks to pay people. You have someone coming to the house to do work. Uh, they're going to charge you 3 4% processing fee for a credit card. Just pay cash or write a check. Some of them take Venmo. It's getting more popular now. But again, access sometimes on occasion, cashier checks, things like that. So it's just easier to have access to a physical bank there. So that is my hub checking account. 
Now, I also have Ally for savings, and that's where I keep the bulk of my money. So Ally, again, they have the high interest savings accounts. There are others. There's Discovers, Capital One, and SoFi, but I just ended up with Ally years ago. And, you know, they work. Now, the reason I keep Ally is, one, because of that interest rate, right? Right now, the time taping is it's 3%. So if you have a large bankroll that you're moving around place to place, when it's on the sidelines, you might as well leave it in a higher interest rate account. The other reason I think I've talked about before is that Ally, uh, they don't seem to care how much money you transfer and how many transfers you make and who you transfer it to. Uh, Chase, on the other hand, when I was doing all my stuff out of Chase, well, just the transfers, Chase fraud prevention is very annoying. Now, it's good, and I appreciate that they look out for you, but the problem is that they'll just, like, lock your account without telling you or you know they'll call you and not really announce who they are and say okay we have to get you us you so me chase and then the other bank on the phone as well to verify you on the account even though you linked it through micro deposits which i find really annoying ally i've never had an issue with now ally is a savings account so they do limit you to six transactions a, a billing period or a statement cycle but they've been waiving that for the last two or three years due to the pandemic so they'll give it back if you go over six and technically it's like ten dollars um so when that when they stop waiving that and refunding it then i might have to reevaluate um ally because i do usually more than six transactions for the six transfers a billing cycle but that's why I use both of them. They're my two hub accounts. Now, in addition to that, I do have an American Express business account that I keep open. And that's because I've at least read that American Express business account transfers can count as a, or can count as direct deposits. So I do keep a business account open for that reason. Again, I picked that one because of that data point. And then plus it's American Express. So as far as I know, it's once in a lifetime anyways. Now, anything else I keep open is because of referrals. So I do like to make the shameless referral video every so often here. So if an account has a referral program, then I will keep it open because a lot of times, like if you look at a chime for example like their referral program is like a thousand dollars a year you can make so even if i could churn chime you know it may it would make more sense so i just keep it open play the referral game and you see that a lot of that with some of the smaller ones as the fintechs as well especially a lot of those are once in a lifetime anyways but even if i could churn it i think the referral having access to the referral program whenever it pops up is more helpful for me might not be for you not everyone has this to you know get referrals on but throw that out there so last thought here you know that's why you should get a hub account or you definitely need one in this game how you should pick one i think you pick one or two uh, look for things that are convenient for you you may not care about having any cash and don't need a physical bank at all well that's fine you can look somewhere else you don't need doesn't have to be a chase i like chase originally because again the majority of my credit card started out being chase now, of course, I have City, U.S. Bank, Huntington, you name it. I have one, many more. But again, because a lot of my banking products were already over there, that's why I went with them. So I would look for what's convenient for you, number one. And then, of course, I would look at some higher interest rate accounts. Because again, if you're going to have the money on the sideline, then you might as well rack up some interest while doing it. But again, it's really whatever works for you. But I would definitely have one. A checking and savings, I think, is the way to go. Usually, they're going to, if you want a physical bank and a high interest rate account, usually they're going to have to be two. Because usually, the uh, like even Ally doesn't have physical places. So uh, those are just things I would keep in mind and I would look for in my hub accounts. But again, that's why I use it. That's why a hub account is so important. So, of course, let me know down below what your favorite hub accounts are. Or are you just a crazy man and don't have a banking home at all, just a banking nomad, if you will? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. So if you liked it, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the show. Of course, posting content just like this every week on how to make banks money become your money. Again, let me know your thoughts on hub accounts. Which ones do you use? Or are you crazy banking nomads? Love to hear those stories as well. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. Talk to you very soon in the next one.